people shivering through bitter, tedious winters. Civilians in line, begging on their knees for just a crumb of food. Children terrified because they don't know what's coming next. Hollowed out corpses, their flesh exposed. For the citizens of Leningrad, every day is another day of torture. Yet another day to be thankful that you're alive. The Siege of Leningrad took place during World War II, and in the six years that the war lasted, it resulted in casualties totaling approximately 1,500,000 people. The Soviet Union had started off powerful in the beginning of the war with an alliance with Germany. They allowed Germany to have some of their strategic war plans and materials, and in return, Germany let the Soviet Union have control of some of the countries and lands that they, the Soviets and Germans, had conquered. Who knows how the war might have gone if the Germans hadn't betrayed the Soviets in 1941. After signing the German-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact of 1939, Adolf Hitler noticed how the Soviet forces were stationed close to the Romanian oil fields that Germany used. Becoming extremely suspicious of Joseph Stalin's true intentions and deciding that this was the time to start working on overthrowing the Soviets, Adolf Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, an invasion in Russia that involved well over three million German soldiers. On June 22, 1941, they severed all of Leningrad's ground communications and encircled the city. Finnish defense forces helped the Germans, stopping at the border of Finland and the Soviet Union, completing the encirclement. German tanks were released, some getting as close as 10 miles from the city. Furthermore, to increase the power of the already devastating blockade, the Germans launched a systematic bombardment, disabling the power stations that supplied Leningrad with electricity. For the Soviets, this was a disaster. After receiving word of the approaching German forces, Army Group North, the Soviet formed both the Leningrad Front and the Karelian Front for defense. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be much help as the Germans launched long-range artillery battles. There was only one supply route, and it was to cross Lake Latica during the winter while it was frozen, earning it the nickname Road of Life. Despite the tragedies that occurred on the route, it helped over one million people escape. Since the Germans moved south, the Soviets attempted to benefit from the situation by creating a land bridge. After a bit of time, the Leningrad and Volkov fronts reached each other and constructed a rail system to provide supplies to the city. This was incredibly dangerous though, since the rail link was an easy striking distance of the German artillery. One thing to remember about the siege is that it affected everyone. Starvation was a major issue throughout the siege. Each person was given a ration card where they could show it and get their food for the day. However, many thieves stole people's cards as an attempt to get extra portions. They would even go as far as killing people just to gain an extra card. As a result, people turned into their darkest selves in order to survive. They ate wild animals, wallpaper, their pets, and even each other. People would look at pictures and say, Это тот, кого мы ели, тот был вакурован meaning, that's the one we ate. That one was evacuated. No matter how disturbing, this is the truth of how things were for the people during this time. It was either eat this random stranger's corpse or die. Oftentimes, if a family member died, the remaining members would hack off pieces of flesh as a food source. During the winter, the ground would become too frozen to bury the dead. So instead, they just piled up the bodies. In a short amount of time, you would be able to see the holes from where civilians would carve out the flesh. A female worker printer said, press, I worked where we daily laid in the printing machine sheets of colored paper. A scrap of such paper leaving the car meant life because having passed the printed press, it became a ration card. To print a few extra cards, it was easy, but we ourselves solved the problems of duty and honor. Many workers died of starvation next to stacks of ration cards. So your grandmother lived during World War II, is that correct? Yes, she was born in 1928, so she was a young girl and lived in a really uh, small rural area. Her mother, was killed about uh, five years ago. So her dad 
remarried and uh, so she also had a younger sister but the stepmother didn't really want my grandmother to live with them so my grandmother lived by herself in the big house and took care of the little child i don't remember how old uh, the sister was but i know that she died uh, while in my grandmother's care because it was just really tough they were both very young and my grandmother being you know a girl and not having any food or money uh, couldn't really take care of her how old was she about how old was she when the war ended so she would have been now in her um, kind of middle teens she would have been if she was born in 1928 she would have been 17. okay and did she hear about the London Grass Siege, or was she just so far away that did news get back to what was going on in the war and during that time to where she was living? So if you think about this era, if you've ever seen the World War II movies, so most news came to people through radio. So radio was available in all the villages, not every village, uh, you know, TV didn't appear until I guess the late uh, 50s, maybe early 60s, and certainly didn't come to the villages until later. So all your news came from the radio and um, being a young girl taking care of a young child, I don't think they had a radio in her home. So, you know, her whole access to information came from word of mouth from other people. Um, now, Leningrad, the, the Leningrad siege, uh, of course, that is an event that we know about now. But uh, during the war, I don't think people really knew uh, what was going on in different parts of the country. But she did, at what time did she finally begin to like rebuild a, a life back together that was... Constantly. I mean, you did this, uh, you know, constantly because once you lose, you know, she, if you think about, she was about 13 when the war started. Uh, so, and her mother had passed, was killed actually uh, about five years ago, five years before the war started. So, I mean, she had been on her own for a very long time. So you rebuild your life with what you have. Uh, and then you have the war going on in the country, the economy collapsing. So, you know, I mean, it, it hasn't become easy for her. In order to free Leningrad, Stalin came up with Operation Iskra, which means spark in English. Soviet forces were going to surround the German forces from the Neva and south of Latika. Although the first few attempts failed, the Red Army was able to break the Germans' hold on Latika. It took several more operations to completely free Leningrad. During Operation Polar Star, the Soviets worked on encircling the German forces and cutting their railway connections off. Although it too failed due to rain, now there was a way to get supplies to Leningrad. Finally, in January of 1944, the Soviet forces broke through the German defense line. Hundreds of towns and villages were free. Bit by bit, the city rebuilt itself. The city of Leningrad was given huge funds from the government after the war to help repair the ruined buildings and groundwork. The siege had lasted 872 days, and up to 1.5 million soldiers and civilians had died. Leningrad received the Order of Lenin Award, thus nicknaming the city Hero City. Even though the people who lived during the siege went through many struggles and hardships, this only proves that anything is possible as long as you never give up.